When starting a siding project in pre-built ML, the best place to start is with a bit of file organization. The two key components are the plans for the job and the pre-built project file. Both of these items should be placed together in a single folder. Rename the pre-built project file and then open the software. Whether the plans come from an email, were downloaded from a plans room, or were loaded from a thumb drive, the method is still the same. Simply place them in the same folder as the pre-built project file and then begin your project. Once the software is open, start by entering information about the job. For example, the project's name and address. This information will be helpful as you reference the job later and will also be used to populate fields on the material reports that you print and the layouts that you create. The architectural date is a key data point to be collected. As the project progresses through different phases of bidding and shipping, you can reference back to these dates and know if your material list has been created from the most recent set of plans. With your information entered, now it's time to bring in your plan images. Simply browse to the folder location where you place the image files for the job and import them. The fundamental idea behind pre-built ML is to bring the images of a plan into the software and simply draw right over the top of these images to collect the required data. When all the pages have been imported, taking a little bit of time to manage or organize the pages can improve your efficiency throughout the rest of the project. There are different tools to help with this, one of which is the bulk rename feature. You can select a page, view it, and rename the page accordingly. Then you can easily tab to the next page, progressing through the whole list very quickly in this fashion. An alphabetical sort button is another tool available to aid with page organization. Making the small time investment like this at the beginning of the plan allows you to move more efficiently throughout the project. When the page organization is complete, you can move on to scaling. Go to a page in which you are going to perform the takeoff. Click the scale button and use the mouse to define two points along the horizontal axis of the plan. Indicate in the box how far it should be between these two points based on the dimensions on the page. Repeat this for the vertical axis. By completing this process, you are defining what the exact scale should be for that page so that all future takeoff work that is done will be accurate. Once this process is complete, you can enter drawing mode. If a scanner has been used to create digital files of plan, often the pages may be skewed or out of level. You can correct this using the straighten function. Click one end of a line that should be level or flat and then click on the other end. The page will be corrected based on these inputs. From there, the page can be scaled and made ready for the takeoff process. Since siding takeoffs often cover multiple different pages, you should scale all the different pages on which the takeoff will be performed. Once this is complete, you are ready to start drawing and collecting information from the plan by making use of the various takeoff tools. As you click on the Go to Draw button, you'll notice across the top of the screen that multiple tools will become available for use. These tools range from the Count tool, which will enable you to simply specify a quantity of items, to the Area tool, which allows you to collect square footages from the plan. Here we're starting to take off the lap siding for this project. We simply point and click, tracing the area where the lap siding will be on the house. This will tell us exactly how much square footage needs to be covered on the house. You can be as detailed as you like, trimming closely around corners and eliminating small areas or portions that do not contain the lap siding material. Once this is complete, we can right click and choose the subtract from section tool from the menu. We can make use of this to cut out areas that should not be included in the square footage of lap siding such as windows. Note in the takeoff items list that as we subtract these areas, the square footage for the container is being diminished, reflecting the portions that we are removing. Later, we'll see how we can make use of these subtracted areas to collect the data for the window trim. Once we've subtracted all of the unneeded areas on the front elevation, we can draw more sections of lap siding on the rear elevation. 
As we did before, we simply trace around the different areas, cutting out doorways where needed, to indicate where the lap siding is needed on the elevation. When we first started working on this page, we set the default pack to exterior trim, as seen at the top of the takeoff items list. A pack is simply a specific collection of material on the material list. By making this setting, when we assign products and applications to the items that we draw, they will then automatically be added to our material list in that specific area. In this case, all of our material will be added to the exterior trim pack. Once we've captured all of the appropriate square footage for lap siding on this page, it is time to assign an application and product. We right-click on the item in the takeoff items list and look through the list of applications. After selecting lap siding, we'll go to the product list and find eight and a quarter inch hardy plank. Next, we'll go to the shingle siding that appears in the gable portion of the front elevation. After we've traced the area and collected all of the required square footage, we assign it to an application and pick a product. With these complete, we can move on to the window and door trim. To make this process easy, we'll select all of the subtracted areas that we previously created. A right click will allow us to add an edge to all of them. We can go to the application list then and assign these edges as window and door trim. Again, we'll pick a product. In this case, we search for Hardy in the product list and choose a five by a quarter by three and a half inch trim. Once the selection is made, colors and lines on the page are indicators of what has been affected. For this project, the bottom window trim is a different product than the rest of the trim. We've removed those items and will demonstrate how trim can be drawn through use of the segment tool. The segment tool allows you to draw the different pieces which are required for a specific application. In this case, we've drawn across all the bottom edges of the windows. With all of them drawn, it is time to specify an application. We go to the takeoff items list and select an application. We'll use the window and door trim application again. But this time, we can customize it by calling it bottom window trim to differentiate it from the other trim. We will finish by selecting a product. In this case, we'll choose a wider hardy product, seven and one quarter inch hardy trim. After completing both parts of the window trim, we'll move on to addressing doors. Here we are using the segment tool again to indicate what lengths are required for the various doors on the elevations. This can include front doors, garage doors, or patio doors. All of these could be handled separately if needed, but in this project we're going to make all of them all the same material, so we'll draw them all together. Different methodologies and tools are available throughout the pre-built ML software to make you more efficient in accomplishing your takeoff. For example, as we finish collecting the data for the doors, you'll notice in the takeoff items list that there is a line marked as LF and segment. This represents all the door trim we just drew. We still need to assign it an application and product. But instead of going through those steps, we'll use a function called move selection here. We'll click the item in the takeoff items list, right click on the window and door trim, and choose move selection here. By doing so, the LF segment line is added to the window trim line and thus receives the application and the product assignments. Multiple different applications can be addressed in the pre-built ML software. Here we have drawn the outside corner boards across the front elevation. We will assign the application of outside corner board and select a product. Here we can observe another feature that can increase your takeoff speed. After we make these selections, we might want to draw more corner boards on the rear elevation. Instead of starting from scratch, 
we can simply choose to continue drawing more of the existing corner boards on the page. We do this by right-clicking on the item, choosing Draw More Segments like this, and proceeding to the next elevation and drawing them where needed. As we look over the page, we see that we have now addressed all the necessary siding components for the front and rear elevations. So now we'll move on to the left and right side elevations. We will start by setting the default pack to exterior trim so our material will automatically be added to the pack. And then we continue on to begin to take off the required material. Numerous different applications can be addressed beyond what we have shown in this example. The scope of a siding takeoff can be expanded to include things like band board, board and batten siding, freeze board, barge, fascia, and more. Prebuilt ML is capable of capturing the data required for all types of siding conditions. After gathering the data for the necessary square footage of lap siding, we'll still have to assign an application and a product. But this time, since we've already used these in the project, they will be even faster and easier to access. Yet another way that Prebuilt ML works to streamline the takeoff process for you. We'll go to the takeoff items list. Right click on the item and notice in the short list that appears for applications and product that lap siding and our desired hardy plank product are both readily available making them fast and easy to assign. Next, we'll go to our windows that we've cut out. We'll add the edge and again find the applications and products in the easy to reshort short list. As we finish the side elevations, we'll address the inside and outside corner boards. We go to each corner of the building and use a simple segment line to draw the different lengths that are needed. Adjustments are easy to make in Prebuilt ML. As we finish drawing, we'll notice that one of the segments that we drew is a little bit shorter than what we want. We move to that part of the page, select the corner board, and then simply just grab a node and adjust it slightly so that sufficient material will be called. Once again, we'll assign the application and the desired product. Finally, we'll address inside corner board and bring our takeoff to a close. A large advantage of the Prebuilt ML software is not only does it allow you to capture raw data from the plans, such as square foot, linear foot, or quantity length, but it also converts that data into actual shippable product. As we create a siding layout of the front and rear elevations, we will see a material list will be provided. But the material list will not reflect simply raw data, but rather actual pieces that need to be shipped to the job. For example, hardy plank is no longer just a square foot amount, but a count of actual 12 foot pieces. So whether the project is big or small, Prebuilt ML is the tool you need to quickly obtain actual material quantities for all of your siding takeoffs.